Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's Facebook Live. My name is Renza Shibilia. I'm here from Diabetes Australia. And today we're talking all about the basics of hypoglycemia. But before we start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the lands where we all are. I'm in Wurundjeri land, and I would like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Now, we're in the middle at Diabetes Australia of a campaign called The Lowdown, and it's all about hypoglycemia. Uh, we had a fantastic community discussion last week, and we've had lots of um, information about the campaign on our socials. And what we've learned is that we really need to go back to basics a little bit and not assume that people know lots about hypoglycemia. So today I am thrilled to be joined uh, to talk all about to talk all about um, hypoglycemia by Liz. Liz, I'm going to throw to you and say, could you please introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from and, uh, and let's take it from there. We've got lots of questions to get through today. Hi, Renza. My name is Liz Kinnersley. I'm a diabetes nurse practitioner and I work for Diabetes Tasmania. So um, I'm actually in Melbourne myself. Um, I work remotely and that's where I am. Wonderful. Thanks so much for joining us and I hope you're keeping warm. Melbourne is freezing mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, so what we learned, so with our campaign, let's just go back, let's just go back to basics a little bit about the lowdown. This is the third year that we have run this campaign and we're shining a light on what hypoglycemia is and how it impacts people with diabetes. And this year's campaign is really very much about the impacts, the, those tangible impacts, how many hours we live with hypoglycemia when we're living with diabetes, the cost of treating hypoglycemia, how long it takes to recover when we have a hypo how many hypos we actually have uh, and so this is something really really interesting and we've been getting some fascinating feedback from the community um, last week as i said we had a community discussion where we interviewed a brilliant endocrinologist from the uk simon hiller to talk a little bit about research around hypoglycemia and then we had a conversation with a number of people with diabetes about their own hypo experiences but today we're going to sort of Peel it, I guess, pair it back quite a little bit and start from the basics. So let me throw this question to you, if I can, please, Liz. What is a hypo? And I know that this, you would think that this is an easy question that people would all know the answer to, but that's actually not the case. So how do we define what a hypo is? Well, the, um, the hint is in actually that word hypoglycemia. The um, word hypo, as we know from other things um, it gets applied to across medicine, is meaning low. So sometimes we've got, we know, kids that are hyper and sometimes people say, which is which? So the key to it is the O. So it's O for low. So it's hypoglycemia and this is defined as a blood glucose reading of less than four millimoles. Okay, so it's really interesting when we ask people this because um, I'm involved in a, a research project that's being run out of Europe and we asked um, people, you know, what are your experiences of hypoglycemia? Um, and we had people saying that they'd lived with hypoglycemia, sorry, they'd lived with diabetes for decades, but they'd never had a hypo because in their mind, a hypo meant that they needed somebody to come and assist them. So if they'd been able to treat themselves, they didn't consider it a hypo. But that's not the case. We actually have definitions about hypoglycemia. It's about to do with your glucose level, not about whether or not you can treat it yourself. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. It's okay. a physiological um, point at which the blood glucose has been forced lower than is natural. Okay. Um, so um, because it is lower than what is natural, it stresses the body and um, we need to correct it. Okay, thank you. Now, who has hypos? Well, people have hypos when they're on particular medications for their diabetes treatment. So it's really specifically only two medicines. One is a tablet called diamicron or glycoside. A lot of people are on this medication. It's a bit of an older medication, but you'll often find people haven't been told that they are at risk of hypoglycemia on this tablet. Oh. The other one is the injectable insulin. So there's some new injectables on the market now. It's only the injectable insulin that can induce hypoglycemia. So we're talking, everybody with type 1 who is on insulin, they might have hypos, they're susceptible to having hypos, um, people with type 2 who are on insulin, and then also people on the medication that you described as well. Now, we're talking here about diabetes, and that's obviously what our focus is, but can people who don't have diabetes have hypoglycemia? 
Not really. Um, there are rare medical situations, but generally um, a person who's not on a glucose lowering medication, um, their body will always be able to maintain their glucose in a safe level. You Look, you could technically um, maybe a person with not living with diabetes use a blood glucose machine in the morning. A person might be actually under four, but that would be pretty rare. And it's really only when it, the person's living with diabetes and on specific medications that this blood glucose of less than four um, is considered hypoglycemia. Fantastic. Thank you. So I'm going to throw a question at you and then we're going to have a chat about this because uh, this is not an easy here. Let's just tick the box and answer this. But what causes hypoglycemia? It is complex, Renza, yeah. um, but it is also easy to understand and also easy to um, take some preventative steps. So yeah. there's a, there's a three sided triangle making up our blood glucose. So if we have more insulin, we'll lower the blood glucose. If we perform more exercise, we'll lower the blood glucose because exercise can lower the blood glucose um, independent of insulin. And if we have less food, we will also lower the blood glucose. So if you are going to be performing some exercise or having a busy morning at the shops, um, or generally being on holidays and walking more than usual or any situation like that, we need to think ahead um, about the fact that it might cause a hypo. So you might eat a little bit more food. You might, um, when you're very experienced, you might know how to take less insulin to um, make up for that. And you'd always be prepared by carrying some supplies so you can reverse your hypo and also carrying your blood glucose machine so you can measure your blood glucose. Yeah. Now. You've listed three things there. There is a fabulous piece of information that is uh, circulated frequently in the diabetes community that lists 42 different things right. on somebody's glucose level. So let's unpack that. Just We're not going to go through all of them because we only have until 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, but let's just talk about some of them. People often will report that when the weather warms up, they are low, they need less insulin. What can you tell us about that? That may well be um, in response to the metabolism of the body just going a little bit faster. Yeah. Um, you're a little, little bit more, your blood vessels are a bit more dilated or something like that. So that would be my interpretation. What do you think, Renza, um, having experienced it? Yeah, look, I've got to say, it is something that I used to find um, the second that the weather warmed up, I absolutely would find myself chugging juice until I re remembered. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I often need less insulin when it's warm. Uh, so I would do some adjustments to my insulin um but this is certainly something that is regularly reported i think there has been some research done about that as well but i you know we, we could go into great detail about that but let's not but another thing is hormones so um you know people will often talk about this around um you know to do with their menstrual cycle and say that there are different periods in their sorry different times in their um you know in their menstrual cycle where they might um find that they um are lower um and that is something else that they need to consider so it is very complex isn't it the whole issue of hypoglycemia it is because at the root of all of that that you're discussing is in the body's insulin sensitivity which can change um over the day over our life over various times um you know in the natural life cycle. So insulin sensitivity, um, if it's if you're more sensitive to insulin, then you're going to require less. Okay. Now, and of course, so that also comes down to things like if, uh, you know, people, um, if their weight changes, that can also impact. Yeah. Again, that comes down to insulin, of course, like the amount of insulin they're taking. We've got a really interesting question. So Jennifer says, I was told a hypo is anything under 4 millimole. Is that right? Because if it is, I've had a few hypos and I'm only on metformin. What, can, what do we know about how metformin impacts on glucose levels? Look, it's it's said to be um, not one of the medications that lowers blood glucose. It makes us more sensitive to insulin. Um, oh, okay. It could be a situation, the blood glucose machines are fantastic and compared mm -hmm. to when I started nursing in the dark ages, they're wonderful, yeah. but there is still a variation. Um, we say of about 10% and, and there's, and they can be safely released onto the market with a little bit of variation. So um, if you're not feeling symptomatic um, and you're a little bit under um, four and you're not on one of those troublesome um, medications, then that would probably be okay. Discuss it with your doctor when you next visit. 
yeah. And I'm so sorry, everybody. I've just changed my background. I had our beautiful, beautiful design behind me, but unfortunately it was strobing and it was annoying me. So I can only imagine it may have been, well, firstly annoying you, Liz, but also the people watching at home. So you've got my bookcases again. Um, all right. So let's talk about the symptoms of hypos because we, we hear that there are commonly reported symptoms. So let's talk about what some of those are. And then I'm going to throw some at you that I've heard from people. And let's talk about those as well, because I find it fascinating when we talk about this so what are the, those that we we generally would associate with hypoglycemia well if you think of the fact that you've got low blood glucose and relate that maybe to your um missing lunch because you're busy at work so when the body wants to be given some more glucose it tells us we get a little bit shaky yes. um, we might get a little bit of a feeling of anxiety um, so I've often seen mentioned that people might be tearful or emotional. I've never actually seen anyone cry in hypo, but you know, any kind of um, brain fog that we're experiencing, and if we're taking insulin or glycoside, the first thing we should always think is, is this a hypo? When you're looking at another person, your family member, etc., if they look a bit clammy or pale or a little bit distracted, um, you can just sort of think of the sort of symptoms that you might get if you're a little bit hungry yes. once we pass the blood glucose reading of about three the brain actually starts to be going without the glucose it needs to to tick over so you know brain fog or sort of poor decision making in an, when you're observing another person these are all times to think mm, could this person be having a hypo yeah so yes i have had teary hypos have you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had, look, 24 years of diabetes, hypo symptoms change. I've also had giggly hypos. Really? So, yeah. My, my husband refers to them as my hypo personalities because <laughs> there are different ones and they have changed over the years. So I have giggly hypos. I And, and again, I hear this from other people. Another one is fast talk. <laughs> So oh, right. yeah, I yeah. talk fast to begin with, but I, yeah. I turn into a very fast talker when I'm low at times. It, there's no consistency here. Other people have spoken about yawning. Yawning is a symptom that they <laughs> notice that, oh, hang on a minute, that might suggest something. Um, mm. So there's a lot to think about, isn't there? You know, wondering, yeah. if it's just, for example, with yawning, am I just tired or am I low? Yeah. Um, yeah and and can hypo symptoms change is that something that that is quite normal for for things to change about how you're feeling that when you notice that you're low yes well, I think you can and you've just you know told us about how you've experienced different ones and also different over your over your life um yeah. so I think if you think about the fact that the body is requiring a bit of glucose it, you know you that will get your tiredness um it also alerts us with a bit of a beating heart um so that could be a bit of an adrenaline surge so that could be your your fast talking so um yeah. basically you really always need to be thinking about be a bit of a detective about yourself or your person you're caring for around this Absolutely. Now, you mentioned that for other people, you know, that some symptoms to look out for. Let's talk about some sensitive ways perhaps to approach that because, um, and I mentioned this in the talk that we did last week, that there was, that I had an incident where I was standing with the fridge door open and I was low and I was eating a cucumber and um, another time a tomato. So things that clearly are not going to in any way bring my glucose levels up in any way meaningful way at all and my husband walked in and was like Rans, I think maybe some juice that's right in front of you and uh of course I told him he had no idea what he was talking about and to step away because he doesn't live with diabetes so how what, what are the sorts of ways that we can approach this with people who might be hypo in a way that might encourage people to actually drink the juice and put down the cucumber well look I think you've probably got more idea I don't live with diabetes myself yeah. um but I think obviously decision making is is a little bit impaired you're yeah. an expert at this and yet you're standing looking at the fridge of the cucumber in your hand so maybe um a little bit of um you know just quite direct um instruction might be appropriate if that if you know that's going to work well for the person I yeah. guess if you're down the street and you see a, 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 a person and your diabetes radars on them, I suppose you can introduce yourself and um, say, you know, yeah. can I help you? Do you need anything? Um, but really, I think um, you just need to get them to drink the juice. Um, yeah. So if you know your person well, you'll know what's going to work. And maybe I suppose 
Renzi, you can say whether this would be helpful. Talk about it at another time and say, ask, maybe ask permission or ask some ideas from, from the person. Um, well, how would you like me to manage this, darling? And then that is the idea. best piece of advice. Don't have the conversation when the person's low because <laughs> yeah. that's not the moment to have the conversation. Yeah. Have it when, at another time when everyone's a bit calmer yeah, and, and work something out. And I think that that's, uh, that's really, really good advice. We've got so many questions coming in. I've got a million questions. We've got questions. Let me go here. We've got a real, this is really interesting. Um, Angela says, I have no hypo awareness at all and I've lost consciousness twice in the last 12 months. Since getting a CGM, I experienced between two and five hypos a day and I've reduced my insulin to practically nothing. Here's the kicker though. I also breastfeed which makes it hard to predict how low I can go. And oh my goodness, those breastfeeding hypos. So let's unpack this because there's a lot in here, but let's just focus for a minute on the breastfeeding because that absolutely has yeah. a huge, huge impact on glucose levels. It's exercise, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, we don't, we're really very resistant to saying to people, eat more before you exercise so you don't have a hypo. We don't want people to eat more energy than they need and put on weight and possibly make their diabetes worse, particularly if they're living with type 2. Um, but I think uh, if you're breastfeeding, you really um, do need specialist um, advice from your diabetes educators or your endo or your, your team. But we do know when we are breastfeeding, we are encouraged to increase our calorie intake. Um, so it is one time when we can um, encourage a person to, you know, carve up, ready for that. Um, and maybe a maternal and child health nurse might be a um, person there who can um, give you some advice about your calorie needs. But, uh, yeah, definitely planning. We always need to plan with breastfeed anyway, have the water, blah, blah, blah. So um, but it, it is well known that your um, insulin requirements are quite low. Yes. Uh, in breastfeeding. So, you know, get, get the support and advice from your diabetes team and you just might need a completely different insulin regime at this time. Yeah. I will add a bit of a personal story here. My baby now is 17 years old. So I was breastfeeding a long time ago, but I do remember those hypos. I used to breastfeed on a beanbag on the floor because I was terrified that if I went low and that she wouldn't have too far to roll, I guess. Um, but also... There was a period I breastfed for two years and the two years that I breastfed on pretty much every flat surface in our house was a small jar of jelly beans, including, uh, on, the, including on the back of the loo, which hygienically not great, but I did have, I breastfed and then went to the loo. Yeah. And the hypo. So um, every flat surface. So wherever I was, there was a jar of jelly beans within reason and it was within reach and it was just... Yeah practical way uh to actually be able to to manage that now we've got um five minutes to go and so let's just go and we've, the, let's go to the first part of that question that's about hypo awareness or not feeling hypos and this is something that's very real for people with diabetes can we talk about that just a little bit please yeah well this is another um thing that isn't going to go away on its own and it really does need the intervention of your team you can um you can restore your hypo awareness but you need to be carefully managed over time now you've got cgm um that is the first, technology is definitely your friend here mm -hmm. um, but um, your endo or your diabetes educators can work with you and, and it is possible to restore your hypo awareness and really important to do so um, you know, having a CGM, things will just generally improve anyway as you yourself get more feedback. Yeah. Look, I think that impaired hypo-awareness is one of the trickiest, trickiest things about living with diabetes and having hypos. It, it is a cruel part of hypoglycemia. Yeah. Um, and it is it is scary. It is absolutely something very scary. So thank you for the question around that. Um, there's a second part that says um, that um, I've dropped to 1.7 and felt nothing. I only knew after doing a finger prick check. So exactly what you said, though, about CGM, being alerted to, to hypoglycemia to hopefully be able to prevent it or to treat it before it gets to that stage is, a, is an absolute gift you know it, it's why we yeah. do call this yeah. technology life-changing um okay let's just run in with another question here quickly uh tracy says they say over five to drive how long should you wait to drive after you've treated a hypo well we always say after you treat a hypo to check again after 15 yeah. minutes and make sure that you're on the way up yes. um, and possibly um if you're 
a little bit not sure, have something more to eat and maybe wait another 15 minutes to make sure you're definitely trending up. Yeah, absolutely. And again, another gift of um, of CGM is the arrows. trend arrows, yeah. they tell you a lot. Uh, and another one here. So if you're feeling fine and hit 3.8 to 4 and catch it, do we still count that as a hypo? Or uh, is that in the range of a meter error? And this is why it's really hard just, just to focus on exact numbers, isn't it? So, right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Obviously, you're right down there. So however you got that way, you walked and didn't eat or you, um, you had a, a keto lunch or something like that, um, we don't have to focus on the number, but you're looking at the trend and the situation, you're obviously at risk of a hypo there. Yes. So you might be revising whatever you were doing to get to that point. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's. I've got one last question for you, Liz, and then I'll let you go, and uh, we'll we'll start to wrap up. But who can you talk to about hypos? I think people do feel quite isolated about this, and there is a fear from some people that they might be judged or told off because then glucose levels aren't perfectly in range. If only it were true that that could happen. Um, who can you talk to about it? Well, look, you can you can talk to your diabetes educator. Not everybody has access. Um, you can talk to your doctors. Um, sometimes, I mean, there's a lot of people walking around who don't know that they're at risk of hypo. So, um, you know, perhaps the GP could refer you to um, a person um, yep. like a diabetes educator. There's fantastic resources available on the NDSS. If you look at the NDSS or Diabetes Australia website, this one's called Managing Hypoglycemia um, and it's got um, all the probably all the questions we're not going to answer today will be covered yeah. in here. Right. Yeah. You could even take that to your GP or you know and use together you can use that as a prompt. Yeah, um, I, I think one other really important thing we should cover Renza is the unconscious hypo. Yes. Um, so you know we talk about the jelly beans and the glucose and the drinks and all those things that's clearly outlined on that on that handout. But if a person's unconscious we're not putting anything in their mouth because they could choke we're just calling triple O immediately that's exactly right so yes call triple o and stay with them to make sure that they're safe until the paramedics arrive that's really very important information we will pop in the um, comments some links to some materials about hypoglycemia for people um, i would encourage you to reach out to us at diabetes australia as well you can ask questions in the facebook um, uh, conversation here and we'll be able to get back to them but and and please do go and check out the the lowdown at um the lowdown.org.au and I would also encourage people with diabetes to speak with other people with diabetes to talk about that lived experience I promise you you are not alone if you're having hypos it is a reality for people with diabetes taking those medications that Liz mentioned earlier on there is nothing to feel shame about there is no reason to be judged or to be blamed for this it is a reality of dealing with diabetes it's very tricky to get the equation. It's impossible, impossible to get the equation of insulin, exercise, food, life, perfect yeah. all the time. It's just yeah. not possible. So, I've so worked with some, I've worked with some amazing um, clinicians in the past who are themselves living with type one diabetes. They know everything there is to know about diabetes. Yeah. They can type it. So um, it's. Okay. it's yeah, it's yeah. just one of those things. Absolutely. So please do go and have a look at the lowdown. It's still going. Now, one of the things on the lowdown is we've got a hypo calculator. You can pop in how long you've had diabetes and a few other little bits of data. And we will let you know just uh, how much time you spent dealing with hypoglycemia. Please don't take this as something that you should be overwhelmed by because it is overwhelming. Take this as something that you should absolutely be cheering yourself for having managed for so long. Hypoglycemia is tricky. We're here to support you though in any way we can. A massive thank you to Sanofi who have supported the um, lowdown for the last three years. The campaign is really important. It's talking about hypos. It's getting it out there so that people hopefully will go and seek help. But do come to us at Diabetes Australia. We can certainly help you too. Liz, thank you for joining us. I could have kept asking. I, I only got through about a quarter of the questions that I had. We may um, not revisit this topic. I'm sure that we will at some point. But thank you so, so very much for joining us today. That's a pleasure and good afternoon, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Thank you. Now, we this will be up on our Facebook page forevermore, so please, you can come back and watch it again or share it with somebody who you think it may be useful for. It will also be available on our other socials, so, you know, we will make sure that, that we share that. Um, but absolutely, hypoglycemia is something that we do need to be talking about. I'm thrilled that we've been able to do that today and throughout the time that we've been dealing with the Lowdown campaign. Um, and please do come to us if you've got any questions. But I think that we're done now. Liam, Donna, we can end the broadcast.